Oh, blessed love, give thanks to your presence with us once again. You're definitely with us here in the tiger's nest. Let me ask, how many of us really comprehend or overstand and understand the mechanics behind the menstrual cycle of the woman? Oh, well, my brother, you know I'm not a woman. Well, even if you're not a womb man, you may have a woman. Or you have brought a woman into this world. I mean, your daughter. Or even if you have a sister, she's a woman too. I mean, this is a man and woman's world. So I honestly believe that both male and female should have a good comprehension, a good understanding, really, of the mechanics, the bio biological mechanics, specifically, of both sexes or both genders. So we will be speaking about that tonight. We'll be speaking about the menstrual cycle of the woman. We'll be basically going into it, giving you the basics, I should say. And this is really in preparation. Keep this in mind. This is in preparation for our online lecture coming up on the 1st of November. That is Sunday, the 1st of November, 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. Yes, we will be utilizing a specific um, webinar platform and we will be carrying this to another level. This is almost a continuation of our previous lecture, which was entitled, can you remember? Rastafari and the cosmos, because we will be going into the cosmos when we deal with this. As you can see, we have Empress Menin and we can see the galaxy behind of her. And you see the ankh just above the uterus, the whole reproductive system of the woman. So we will be explaining all of that in detail on Sunday, the 1st of November, 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. I'm definitely looking forward to everyone to come into the house and full joy that. Remember, all you have to do to preserve and reserve your seat is to definitely uh, contact us. You can make your payments using the Cash App, which is the, the, the more preferred um, means and, and, and you know, for the money transfer at this time, the cash app, Atonra 2723, A-T-O-N-R-A 2723. And of course, if for one reason or the other, depending on maybe where you are in the world and you cannot make that connection, all you have to do is email us at priestisaac27 at gmail.com. And we will also give you, you know, the alternative ways of making that contribution so that you could get your key so that on Sunday, the 1st of November, you could enter into the lecture room. And I am promising you, just like the previous lecture, is going to be more than you expected. I think everyone said that when we did Rastafari and the Cosmos. I mean, people came out saying, brother, I listen to you all the time and you're always dropping some jewels, but I didn't expect all of that knowledge and information on Rastafari and the Cosmos. And let me just say, this is somewhat of a continuation because yes, we will be talking about Rastafari and the woman on many different levels, many different levels, but tonight, I'm highlighting the, the, the uterus, the womb, and the menstrual cycle of the woman in preparation. In fact, we will be doing a few programs preparing for the 1st of November. So when we get into that lecture, we don't have to go back to so many different things and try to break so many things down because you would have already been prepped for example, like what we're going to present to you tonight. So although the admission is only $20 United States currency, remember, once you, once you pay before the 19th day of October 2020, check the calendar and see what today is. Once you pay before the 19th day of October, you only pay $10 to come into that lecture. So if you get your early bird tickets now, you only pay $10 to enter into the lecture. And as we say, 
the cash app is available at Tanra 2723 and you could email us if the cash app is not available and we will explain to you how that goes. So we are looking forward to everyone joining us even at that hour, very important. And once, once since we are on that, let me just say quickly before we get into the subject that the Sunday prior to that, you know, it's two Sundays in a row we're doing this, eh? the Sunday prior to that, which is Sunday, the 25th of October. Listen, man, you need your pen and your, your pad, eh? You need to be writing this stuff down. Don't come contacting me, telling me, boy, you know, I forgot. No, no forgot thing around here. Sunday, the 25th day of October, 2020, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we will be having a wonderful international homeschool presentation. Did you hear me? We will be having a international homeschool presentation so just like on the poster you see queen nefertiti with her youths bring all the children i'm looking for the children that day eh? not necessarily all the you know the old people i'm looking for the children that they bring the children in and remember this is totally free you don't have to pay to come into this um, presentation. This is Sunday, the 25th day of October, 3 p.m. International Homeschool. We will be dealing with astronomy and we will be dealing with African history, African heritage. We're going to spend a whole hour exploring the heavens. Trust me, we will be exciting your children and bringing the knowledge to another level. And of course, those who are already a part of our homeschool programming, they for sure know exactly what to expect. Well, maybe not exactly, because we're going to carry it to another level. But I must say, we have an international homeschool program that we do deliver. It is a program that we, we send out via the email every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, definitely it's prepared for the children, but the information is definitely of the highest standard and it can only add to the, the intelligence and, and even the appreciation of the African heritage and even the cosmos and astronomy. It can only add to the appreciation that your children would have for these subject areas. So as the poster says, bring the children, this is totally free. But you would have to email me. No cash app is involved with this. Just email Priest Isaac at priestisaac27 at gmail.com and uh, explain to us that, hey, we would like to be a part of the homeschool presentation for Sunday, the 25th day of October. And we will definitely give you the key that will let you in. Um, don't, be, don't be surprised if we ask you a question or two because you're coming with your children, right? Okay, because we want to shout out your children. We may bring you on screen if you want to. It's going to be very, very interactive. And trust me, your children, they are going to love it. Now, don't confuse the dates, please. This is the 25th day of October, and that is 3 p.m., not 7 o'clock in the night. 3 p.m. This is um, child friendly. <laughs> so that is 3 p.m. in the afternoon. But the Sunday after that, Rastafari and the womb, man. That's the, the 1st of November. But that's not an hour. Eh? That's two hours we're going to be staying in the lecture hall. You know, so definitely. And that is only $20 United States currency. But I will repeat one more time that once you get your tickets before the 19th day of October, just $10 to come into this lecture formation here. Now, this is going to be a real teaching moment, but I do not intend to be long. Now, of course, within Rastafari, especially within the order of Bobo Shanti. We would hear about the 21-day purification. I myself have done programs where, you know, brothers and sisters have been speaking about this 21-day purification, some for, some against, 14. The Bingy talk about the seven-day. Even the Bible speaks about when the woman menstrual period starts and and, and, and she, um, seven days after she's freed up to the congregation and all of that. But you see, although I'm not here 
to break down the theology for you because this is we're taking this in stages eh i'm not breaking down the theology now you can't put everything in in your mouth at the same time you have to bite a piece and chew and then swallow let us be clear here most people that you hear arguing about woman in house and when the woman bleeding and this and that let's just be clear most of us have no idea of what is happening biologically with the woman at that time and to be honest if you don't even have a, 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 a an idea of the movements of the woman um, and the uterus and the womb and everything that is related to such i don't think you are even qualified to start to talk about you no know, purification and all of that you're just running with a dogma you should at least understand the bi biology of it and then you would have a more sensible presentation to make i mean you disagree no you can't disagree with that so we are going to be talking quickly about the menstrual cycle I, I will repeat i'm not holding you too long because we're just going into the basics now we can go deeper than this but we're just touching the basics so we do not make it confusing. Because listen, the fact is, hey, my brothers and sisters, I've seen cases where young girls, young princesses have, you know, seen their menstrual period for the first time. It's called um, menarche. That's when a, 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 a young child sees her, her menstrual cycle for the first time. It is referred to as menarche. You know, not monarchy, <laughs> interesting, menarchy, just like when her, her cycle stops, it's called menopause, check all the men, you know, and, and, and the cycle is men straight. So you have men straight, men straight, men on pause, imagine that, men on pause, you know, and, and her first cycle is the menarchy. I guess that's why we're men and, and man and men and all of these different things, I don't. Yeah. But anyway, the menstrual cycle really is what makes reproduction possible. Please listen to me. I don't want to confuse you. This is we're not here to entertain it. Eh? We want you to leave this little presentation with a better comprehension of what's going on within your your your. Uh, well, if you're not a woman within the woman's uterus, within her reproductive system good so we will be talking about the menstrual cycle basically just quickly we will be talking about two cycles you have the ovarian cycle and you have the uterine cycle now both cycles um they they, they basically synchronize with each other meaning that they're taking place at the same time but they're basically two different cycles as such so the ovarian cycle has to do with the the development of the follicle and of course what is known as ovulation and then the uterine cycle has more to do with the function of the endometrium which has to do with the thickening and the the shedding of the blood within the walls of the uterus now i think we should begin by becoming familiar with the reproductive system of the woman. A simple little thing here, look at this, eh? The reproductive system of the woman. So basically the womb itself, but this is really the uterus, the inner part, the uterus. Now the endometrium, this is really the endometrium here, which is really a two parts. You have the functional endometrium, that is the, the tissues that we know that get filled with the blood and becomes thick and then sheds the blood at the at the the beginning of the menstrual cycle and then you have what is known as the base endometrium as well of course you have the fallopian tube that is connected to the ovary where you have the follicle inside of the ovary that will come out of the ovary and into the fallopian tube that will eventually meet the sperm if there's a sperm to meet and of course the production of life would begin but of course if none of that happens this is where the whole menstrual cycle will continue and continue we just made mention of the first menstrual cycle 
of, of the woman that goes until again menopause and there's only a pause <laughs> in the cycle if the woman is pregnant or if she is definitely ill or there's something seriously wrong. Now, of course, this is the vagina, the vaginal canal. As you would know, the opening of the vaginal canal is what is referred to as the vulva. And as I said eh, earlier, with no disrespect to no one, a simple thing like this, a lot of us, both male and female, a simple thing like this, just get in the chat and looking at it. A lot of us, we are void of this sort of knowledge. And I'm saying that before you try to get too religious with me about who is supposed to stay in the house for how long, and you don't even understand this, you are not qualified to speak on the subject. Don't let what you may be seeing complicate you. Let us just first look at our timeline. Now, the menstrual cycle of the woman and the full cycle that we are speaking of of the from the menstrual cycle to the ovulation to when the menstrual cycle begins again should be of a period of approximately 28 days. I think by now we understand that the woman connects highly with the moon. And in the same way that the moon has a regular cycle of 28 days, some would say 27.7 to be precise, but we know we are rounding it off to 28 days. The same way the moon does that, that is the same cycle that a natural woman should have. You know, to be honest, when a woman is seeing her, her period like 35 days after, or in some cases even longer than that, there must be some sort of problem taking place that should be looked into. But once everything is natural and in order, you definitely should have a natural 28-day cycle. All right. Now, looking at this now from a higher level, as I said earlier, during the time of puberty, from when she begins a, a, her, for her first period, that is the menarche period. Now, the menstruation period, which is considered the period of bleeding. Let's start from day one. When the woman sees her first spot of blood, that's counted as the first day of the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle has an average, you know, of four to five days. Some people say that the woman should not uh, go through that at all. Some even say when she goes through that, it should be one little drop and she sees nothing more. Yes, obviously some, some sisters, it's almost like they're hemorrhaging where they bleed, you know, uh, some heavy clots of blood coming out and in to some degree that may not be fully natural. The period that we call ovulation would last somewhere between the 13th to the 15th day. Somewhere there about you have the ovulation period, not the period of the woman. Now you see we're playing with words now. A woman is on her period. That's what we usually call it when the woman is passing that blood. But I'm using the English language now. The, the period or the area of the cycle then that we call the ovulation, that is usually somewhere between the 13th, maybe it's the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, not necessarily going beyond 16th and for sure not into the 17th day. But this is the time when the egg is released or what is more officially referred to as the oocyte that is released specifically from the ovaries. And this is the time now when the woman is in a position to become impregnated, you know. Now, let's have a good clarity of what's going on here. Now, the period between the first to around the 14th day is called the pre-ovulatory stage. That pre means before, ovulatory is ovulation. So the pre ovulatory or the pre-ovulation stage. Now from the 14th day, for the next 14th day, if you notice it's two set of 14 days, um, the fourth, after the first 14 day to the 28th day, you have the post-ovulatory stage 
or post ovulation stage because remember the ovulation is around you know it peaks at the 14th day this is very important now the pre-ovulation stage is what is known as the follicular stage or follicular phase so that's the time when the follicle is getting strong and preparing itself for ovulation please follow me good and that is connected to the menstrual stage of the um the 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 uterus remember we're speaking of two different things here we still we're still dealing with the uterus and we're dealing with the ovaries you know all right so we have also again the post or after ovulation stage which is also connecting to the the uh, what is known as the luteal stage or luteal phase specifically directly dealing again with the uterus all of this is very important and eh? let's not dodge this it's good to know the cycle properly interesting enough this is all in the mind yeah this is more than just the biology of what we call the body but let's get into the brain now remember we have some master glands we have the hypothalamus we have the pineal gland we have the pituitary gland and of course you know they tend to leave out the pineal gland you know those of us who who know that the pineal gland is the seat of the soul and we understand that the third eye is directly connected to the pineal gland well well for some reason or the other science seems to leave the pineal gland out of its discussion you understand but still we are taught that the hypothalamus and the pituitary has a lot to do with the cycle of the woman, the menstrual cycle of the woman. And this is very, very serious. For example, now the hypothalamus releases something that is known as gonad gonadotrophin. That's a gonadotrophin hormone, also known as GNRH. And the GNRH now allows the pituitary gland to release what is known as the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and the luthanizing hormone, which is LH. You got that? It's the follicle stimulating hormone. I think that speaks for itself. And the luthanizing hormone. So you have FSH, please remember this and LH. We're not going to break everything down today, but I want you to remember these two hormones if you don't remember anything else. FSH and LH. Very, very important. Now, all of this is taking place from the first day of the menstrual cycle, and we're going into weeks one and weeks two of the four-week cycle, please. This is very, very important. Now, these hormones, specifically the FSH and the LH, because remember, the GNRH is what determines the amount of FSH and LH that goes out. But the FSH and the LH, which again is the follicle-stimulating hormone and the luthanizing hormone, that is what um, assists the follicle itself to develop. Now, remember that within the follicle, you have the primary, the primary pardon me, um, oocyte, sex cell, and that is being nourished now. Now, this is just like the, 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 the uh, in, in the jungle then, it's the survival of the fittest. Only the strongest survives because you have a number of eggs then. You have a number of follicles within the ovaries that are preparing, but is only, only one primary oocyte will be released but at the end of the day the stronger one will be the one that is released into the fallopian tube so it's almost just like the um what you call it it's just like the the sperm just in the same way that you see the sperm running to the egg the same way that you see the sperm trying to get to the egg first is the same way that the same egg itself um, is, is striving to be the best amongst the eggs, if you want to call it, that will meet that champion sperm. So it's not just the sperm is the champion, even the egg is the champion. You are made from the best of your mother and you're made from the best 
of your father. So you could see it here. Here is that seven day period in red. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, the, the follicle begins to strengthen itself, get stronger. Remember you have more than one. They're all strengthening themselves, but only the strongest one will survive. That's the point that we're making here. So, but I'm showing to you that during this time, the, the brain itself, within the brain, you have these glands, the hypothalamus and the penal gland and the pituitary gland. They are releasing these specific hormones, the FSH and the LH, luthanizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, which is basically encouraging, stimulating, nourishing the follicle to get stronger and stronger and prepare itself to come out of the ovary into the fallopian tube so that during the time of ovulation now, when the oocyte, which is basically the, the sex cell that we're looking for, the oocyte, will come out and prepare itself to meet the sperm. Okay, what happens is somewhere between the 10th to the 14th day now, because of the, the growth, the growth, pardon me, of the follicle, what happens there is an increase in the estrogen. In fact, it's a specific type of estrogen. It's um, 17B estra, estradiol, I think that's the correct term. Yes, 17B estradiol, yes, yes, that's what it is, I'm positive. 17B estradiol. And because of that increase in the estrogen, it sends like a negative feedback. Remember, this is the body here, the goody, the anatomy working. It. it sends back a feedback or a message to the same glands, the, the pituitary gland and, and the penile gland, etc., which really now slows down the production of the follicle stimulating hormone. Basically, it's just like telling it, well, you know, I don't need any more of that because I'm ready to go. Now, when this happens, some of the, 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 the follicles inside of the ovaries will literally regress and die off. But again, the stronger one will continue to grow and live and prepare itself to, to, to um, exit out of the ovary and enter into the fallopian tube. Because what is happening here, as I said before, it's almost like a competition. So it is the follicle that has received the most follicle stimulating hormone. Pardon me, or oh, listen to me carefully, I should say. The follicle that has received the most follicle stimulating hormone. This is the one that would stay alive, stay strong, while the others again will die off. So you could even see the whole process here as it, this is the nucleus, as it gets stronger, as it builds itself. And listen to me now, not just the hormones, you know, why, why is it receiving more hormones than the others? Because within this whole process between, you know, day 10 to 14, uh, a, a sort of um, chemical transformation is taking place. You know, it, it's a very deep thing to go into really, but what happens? is that the different, uh, the different cells that make up the, the follicle will begin to uh, create receptors on them. You have the, what do you call it, the theca cell, et cetera, and they create different receptors on them for the LH, for the SH, uh, the S, for the FSH, pardon me. So it's almost, again, like a race to see who can create the most receptors so they can receive these hormones that are coming from the glands. This is happening inside of the woman. Eh? This is between day one to day 14. All of that is taking place. So when we see day 14 appearing and coming close, the one that has created the most receptors, which would obviously have received the most hormones, that would be the stronger one. And by day 14, what is known as the oocyte is ready to come out of the, the follicle itself and come out of the ovary and enter into what is known as the fallopian tube and find its way 
down the tube looking for the sperm so that a new life could be created in the uterus. So basically, as I said, the, the egg itself, the oocyte will be released from the ovary. And that is because, I mean, about two, three days before ovulation, there's a high surge of hormones again that is released. This is what forces the main egg out of the ovary and sends it again into the fallopian tube. But now listen, remember we're talking about two separate cycles here. Let us look now at the, 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 um, the cycle directly dealing with the endometrium. Because while all of this, what I just explained, is really taking place, the, the uterus is preparing itself for the egg. This is what is the, the whole menstrual cycle is all about. So, you know, as I said, from day one, you know what's taking place. The old blood is being shed, but don't mind that because the walls of the uterus or the endometrium specifically is building up once again to actually... Uh, preparing itself for the egg. So in case of pregnancy now, the egg itself and the new life that is being formed can be maintained. So basically, after what is known as the menstrual stage, because there's a menstrual phase, I should say, phase may be the better term, after the, the menstrual phase now, then you have another phase where you really get the thickening of the walls, the blood, and this is known as the proliferative phase. This is where the estrogen levels would rise. So we're dealing with estrogen now. And what happens here, you get a, a thickening of the endometrium and we're directly dealing with the functional endometrium as well. Remember there's a base endometrium, which is very important. The two of them work together. Because what happens now with the thickening of the endometrium, you also have um, um, growth of the endometrial um, glands. And then there is an emergence of spiral arteries. In fact, you know, I, I don't think I have a picture of that, but what it is, it's really, it is like a, a spiral connection from the functioning endometrium to the base endometrium that basically keeps them together. And there you have the thickening. This is after the fifth day now. Anything after the fifth, sixth, seventh day, you have what is known again as the proliferative stage. And, and, and within the proliferative stage, you have the word pro-life. Pro-life-ra-tive. P-R-O-L-I-F-E. R-A-T-I-V-E. You see what's going on, but because we speak in English, we proliferative. It's pro-life. <laughs> you know, it's new life. You know, as as Brother Ronnie Benjamin said of midnight, yeah, yeah, give thanks for new life. All of this even creates something that is known as cervical mucus, which is very friendly uh, and more um, what's a better word, hus hus hospitable to the sperm then. You know, and this actually optimizes the chance for fertilization. So this is anywhere between, again, day 12 to day 15, maybe as early as day 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Well, it, it may not be all those days. Give it like four, three to four days somewhere in that circle. Um, 13, 14 day usually are the peak days of ovulation where it's almost the perfect uh, chance for a, a woman and the man to get pregnant. Well, I mean, is the woman really getting pregnant, but look at it as a, a you know a dual thing. We, we can't always look at it as if it's the woman that is pregnant, you know? I mean, anyone that has a scientific understanding, I mean, once you, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you have, you are, you, you, um, you have created a child in the womb, even if you're miles away, there's a spiritual connection with that child. Yes, the woman may be the one carrying the child physically, but have you ever thought that the man is the one carrying the child spiritually? Yeah, it must be a dual action. We are working together as a team. So basically, even if you look at this chart uh, of the, the follicular phase as we spoke of, ovulation, the luteal phase, the premenstrual phase, you see? 
And if let's just highlight, let me just highlight the main two hormones that I wanted to highlight. Here you have the follicle stimulating hormone here and you have the luteinizing hormone here very important and you could see that both of these hormones these are the key ones for the moment um you you see that they they rise they peak during the 14th day or thereabouts and in fact during the 21 day period the luteal phase you could see these key hormones the luteinizing and the follicle stimulating hormones at, at, at their lowest stage but at that time now the estrogen is peaking again interesting the estrogen is not at its highest stage the estrogen level is at its highest stage during the same 14 days so during that 14 day time estrogen luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are all at their highest stages um the luteinizing and the follicle stimulating hormone are low gone very low during the 21 day um time frame the purification time frame but the estrogen makes a next extra spike during that time that's interesting and of course, you could see the progesterone is at its highest um, um, point during that 21 day um, um, period, which shows that there is a mystic science about that 21 day. A lot of us, we are playing bat and ball with it. To be very honest, when I hear Bobo Shanti say that the 21 day purification is a natural um what you call it when you don't want to have no children? Safe sex business. I don't know why. I don't know what's so safe about that. Uh, oh, man. Mm. The word is slipping me here. A natural, oh, man. Mm. Contraceptive. You can see man not into them things there. Eh? Honestly, I don't like it. It is not something that touches me because that is not the main thing. You see, we are so shallow that that's the first thing that comes to mind. You know, to be honest, even coming into the Bobo Shanti order, sometimes when I, um, let me make sure I'm showing you the right thing here on the border. Huh? Okay, yes, yeah. Even coming into the order, when I, you know, when I see some of my sisters, the empresses, you know, being interviewed, can you tell me about the Bobo Shanti woman order? Well, the, the order of the woman, you know, when the first day you see a period, we go in house, that can't be it. That's it that that's the order of the woman come on man you gotta be better than that if we would take time you know and to be very honest a lot of people you know when precise that talk they don't want to hear him you know he gone too deep he talking about things that john never teach us if we were to take the time and check this out what about the the um, progesterone it's so interesting how, how do we know that's not the spiritual hormone because there is something spiritual about the 21 day you better believe it so we should as scientists we should sit down and examine the cycle and see exactly what is taking place on the 21 day and then try to figure the thing out but anyway as i said we're just putting this together and bringing it forward Basically, as an education, as short as it may seem, it is an education because a lot of us, we have never even taken the time to sit down and examine the cycle of the woman. And again, if you are Rastafari, even if you're just dealing with the regular, you know what I mean? The regular, you know, the Bible say after seven days, the woman unclean until blah, blah, blah. even if it's that you're promoting and you do not have an understanding of the, the mechanism and the, the mechanics, I should say, of the cycle of the woman, you shouldn't be graduating to no dogmatic theological level, no religious vibes, and we don't understand the biology of our woman. You don't play with people like that. And I think we play with people. Yeah, that's my opinion. Eh? So this is why, as, as I said, I do not like to hear us refer to it as a natural contraceptive, as if that's what it is. It sounds as if, you know what I mean, we're, we're, we're thinking on a linear level. It's higher than that. There must be some science there, not just so you don't have too much babies. Yeah, let's check the hormones and see what's going on. Let's understand what the pituitary and the hypothalamus and the penile gland, uh, what they're saying during this time. 
because even in the little explanation that we gave, eh, it can go deeper than that. You know, it, you know, it can be broken down on different levels as it relates to the natural cycle of the woman, you know? So, so as I said, I promised that I wouldn't keep you too long here. And um, basically this was something I just put together basically before the Sabbath moment. And I hope those of you who let's say run into it on the Sabbath, you know, it would be, you know, a, a, a strength to you for the Sabbath and a good lesson itself, but it's really a preparation. So you could watch it a, a, a few times. It's a preparation for the lecture that we will be doing on Sunday, the 1st of November, hmm? on the online lecture specifically. Let me just remind you that is not on YouTube. It's not no Zoom lecture. Obviously, we ain't flying coming nowhere, and I don't think you're flying coming here. We will be meeting online. We, be, we will be utilizing a specific webinar, um, a specific webinar platform, and uh, for you to get your, your key, all you have to do, remember the admission is only $20 United States currency, but of course, if you, if you um, buy your ticket before the 19th day of October, yes, for sure, you will get your entrance fee for only $10, half the price of admission, but anything after the 19th, and you're coming to get the ticket, it will be $20. But I mean, that's still good. I, I mean, to me, the value is way beyond that. And of course, the, the payments, the, the, the preferred avenue for payments will be the cash app. So as much as you could use the cash app, we would prefer that. And it's Atonra 2723, A-T-O-N-R-A 2723. And of course, if you do not have the cash app, you're not left out at all. There's so many other ways that this can be done. All you have to do is email us, priestisaac27 at gmail.com to get more information on whatever alternative means and ways that we can also, you know, make sure that we accommodate you on Sunday, the 1st of November, 7 p.m. And, you know, it is good that you come forward early. Rastafari and the woman, Obviously, the information we dropped today, as I said, this is just basic. This is basic. We all should know this. Our little children should know this. Your little daughter should not come and say, Mommy, I'm bleeding. She should understand what is happening. She should be looking forward to that. You know, King Emmanuel say, rise the red flag. Do we understand the science? Then there's a red and white flag. Do we understand the science? I give thanks for King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. That's why nobody, at least not under my watch, can come and try this King Emmanuel. Eh? Trust me, eh? Believe me, don't be trying to do no video and chat no crap. Eh? I will come for you. Talking about the black Christ in flesh, don't talk about what you don't understand. So I'm definitely looking forward to each and every one joining us. I really am looking forward. This is going to be an extremely dynamic lecture on Sunday, the 1st of November. I promise you after that two hours presentation, well, it may be maybe an hour plus, you know, because we will have space for question and answering, you know, for sure. Those of you who are at the last lecture, you you saw how we did it. The question room is there and it's it's very possible if you want to come on, on, on the screen and, and ask your question live, we will be able to interact. If you're not shy, it's up to you. You can definitely do all of that Sunday, the 1st of November. And let me say also, please do not mix up Sunday, the 1st of November with Sunday, the 25th of October. You get me good? Sunday, the 25th of October is the Sunday prior or the Sunday before Sunday, the 1st of November. This is when we will be doing the, the international homeschool programming. This itself is going to be a blast. This is going to be a lot of fun. You better believe it. Eh? I mean, not that the uh, Rastafari and the woman ain't going to be fun, but this is going to be fun. Make sure you bring the children. You know, we're not looking for no holy fogies in here. We want the children to come. No disrespect, you know, just, you know, keeping a little humor there. Bring the children in for sure, because it's going to be prepared for them. You know, it's going to be prepared for them. We're going to be, you know, entertaining them to a degree. We're going to be showing them how 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 you know how 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 much fun basically it is to learn astronomy 
and learn about their African history and heritage. The Honorable Prince and the Honorable Princess will be with me for this session here. In fact, this is their program. They're basically gonna be running that show, the princess and the prince. So get ready for something big with them two people there when they come on board and, and show the other children exactly what we do here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And remember that is totally free. That is totally free. The only thing you have to do, don't worry about no cash app. The only thing you have to do is to email me, priestisaac27 at gmail.com. Well, I say me, but it may, I may not be the one man in the email, but it's still me, priestisaac27 at gmail.com and explain that you would like to be a part of the International Homeschool presentation for Sunday, the 25th day of uh, um, October. Remember that's in the afternoon. I have to say these things because people will mix up everything and oh, this is Sunday, seven o'clock, which one is three o'clock, and you know, but the posters are there. You, uh, what do you call this stuff? Screen save it, you know, and keep it in your archives. And so you can look at it and make sure that you have the date and the time correct. So you don't have to pay to come to this, my brothers and sisters. You could tell a friend if you have a friend that has children that that wants, you know, to inspire their children as it relates to African history, heritage, uh, um, astronomy. I'm sure those of you listening who have children, I'm sure you're doing a good job with them. I mean, we can assist you. I'm telling you the truth. And we will have a wonderful time. And this is something that we will be doing on a monthly level, at least for now. So you can look forward to it. We we will continue to carry to another level. And as I said, this is totally, totally free. So I don't think there's no excuse. The only thing, as I said, when you contact us, I may ask you a question or two as it relates to the homeschool programming, you know, um, because I expect you to come with the youths and we may want to know a few little details from you. So I hope that's not a problem at all. So the 25th day of October, International Homeschool Program, and the 1st of November, 7 p.m. in the evening, sharp, we have Rastafari and the woman. That is going to be a very, very cosmic presentation. So give thanks. It is a joy that you could come and sup and sit with us in the tiger's nest. Yeah. Give thanks for the Sabbath day. Holy Manuel I, Selassie I, Ja Rastafari. Blessed love, family.